Look at that cat. Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. Uh, I do believe that you know that I have been sick these days and that's one of the reasons why I haven't released much content. Why? I took some days to make the FSR3 video, then I was still quite sick and I couldn't even speak properly. Gladly I'm now quite better, let's say 90% of what I should be, uh, but I am much better and that's why I'm making this video now. Well, it took some time, but at least I'm bringing it. If you saw my last FSR 3 video, passing right now in the screen by the way, you know that I've said that I was actually a bit disappointed on AMD's FSR 3 because although it does, it does perform pretty well, although it does not have many motion artifacts, it did not support variable refresh rate, basically free sync or G-Sync, which is a thing that has been a must for years and years. But with these new AMD Fluid Motion Preview drivers, I must say that it is the opposite. I'm actually surprised. And not only about AMD's fluid motion, but these drivers in general. And I can tell you right away that these drivers bring lots of things that most of you didn't even notice, but they're there, uh, they're there, and for users that are more experienced with uh, the usual Radeon software, they can, or in this case, the Adrenaline software, they know those things have changed, and we have lots of things, including, including the fluid motion frames. So. Awesome. awesome! And don't worry, because as usual, I'll be talking about those new things uh, more in detail, what they bring with these drivers, what they didn't bring, what they made better, and what they made worse. I, I'm really, I really want to, to show you that. And of course, I would really like to show you today's sponsor as well. Today's sponsor is Maximum Settings, a cloud-based gaming service where you won't need to spend thousands of dollars to upgrade your PC or a personal nuclear plant to boot up your system. Just do it! And for as low as 9.95 Canadian dollars a month, you can play the most recent games on your computer, even if your hardware isn't prepared. Sign up today for your full Linux gaming PC with no resource sharing and start enjoying high-level gaming on any PC. So let's cut to the chase and go to the release notes. First of all, we have the important note saying, this preview driver is intended to provide users an early first look into upcoming features with AMD software, feedback is encouraged and can be submitted to the AMD bug report tool. If issues arise or persist during the usage of the preview driver, please use the AMD auto detect install tool to revert to the latest recommended AMD software adrenaline edition driver. And what AMD is basically telling you here is that these are beta drivers. It means that the software will improve further and further, the features will just get better, and according to what I saw with these preview drivers, they are actually very, very good. But well, let's move on once again. The new features highlights start with AMD Fluid Motion Frames, the AFMF Technical Preview. Boost FPS with frame generation technology for a smoother game experience. AFMF adds frame generation technology to DirectX 11 and 12 games on AMD Radeon RX 7000 series desktop graphics. AFMF preserves image quality by dynamically disabling frame generation during fast motion. And I can tell you right away that this isn't bad at all, it is actually pretty good. This doesn't happen when you're moving the mouse like this, so slowly um, and smoothly. It happens when you're moving the mouse just like forcefully, like this, very harshly, then the frame generation disables itself and just for, let's say, one or two seconds. After one second of you not moving the mouse like that, it will enable the fluid motion frames or the frame generation once again. And that's how it works. And it does that due to the input latency. So if you're, do if you're doing pa fast paced movements, it disables the fluid motion frames in order to disable the input latency as well created by the fluid motion frames, okay? That's a good thing, at least for now, that's how it works. I don't know if it will work this way when it gets released in the first quarter of, uh, the first quarter, sorry, of 2024, but at least for now, this is how it works and it is actually a good thing in my opinion. Now, what to know, AMD Fluid Motion Frames AFMF. AFMF may be enabled for any DirectX 11 and 12 titles, such as Cyberpunk 2077, using the per-app settings within the AMD Adrenaline software. AFMF can be automatically enabled using the HyperRx feature or using the global graphics settings toggle for these select titles. A Plague Tale Requiem, Deep Rock Galactic, Hitman 3, Red Dead Redemption 2, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Borderlands 3, Dying Light 2, Hogwarts Legacy, Resident Evil 3, Starfield, Control, 
Far Cry 6, Horizon Zero Dawn, Resident Evil 4, The Last of Us Part 1, Dead Space, Ghostwire Tokyo, Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, Shadow of the Tomb Raider and The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. And these games that you see here are basically the hyper, what they call the hyper tuned games, where the, the rate and super resolution should automatically upscale from a, a lower render resolution, while it doesn't, at least, well, in these drivers I don't really know, but in the previous it didn't. But with these drivers, the hyper tuned games can be actually used HyperRx, you can just go there, enable HyperRx, and it will enable the AMD's fluid motion like this, just simple as it can be. AFMF can introduce additional latency in games and is recommended to be combined with AMD Radeon Anti-Lag and Anti-Lag Plus for an optimal experience. Actually, when you activate AMD Fluid Motion in the Per Game tab, uh, it automatically enables the Anti-Lag or the Anti-Lag Plus if the game supports it, so don't worry. As AFMF may introduce additional latency in games, AFMF may not offer the optimal experience in fast-paced competitive titles. The AFMF technical preview currently requires the game to be played in full-screen mode with HDR disabled and VSync disabled. For the optimal experience, AFMF is recommended to be used on AMD FreeSync displays. Users are recommended to disable HDR in Windows display settings or disable HDR in the game, as well as the Auto HDR. Now, as for the VSync and FreeSync, well, it is actually funny because FSR 3 has way, way less input latency than, uh, than AFMF, obviously, because it's inside the game engine instead of being uh, outside, like the drivers injecting the frames. It's way better with way less motion artifacts overall. It can be used decently over 60 FPS, while, for example, the fluid motion frames usually work better when you have 70 average FPS or higher. But at the same time, the fluid motion frames work with FreeSync and G-Sync, and once again, the FSR 3 frame generation doesn't. If they are basically the same, but the fluid motion is just, it's just FSR 3 frame generation inside the driver, why does FSR 3 frame generation not work with FreeSync or G-Sync? I guess AMD needs to update it. Yeah. AFMF features an activity monitor similar to AMD Radeon Super Resolution to confirm the frame generation status using the AMD Software Adrenaline Edition in-game overlay. Use the default hotkey of Alt-R for the full-screen overlay or Alt-Z for the sidebar overlay. AFMF is recommended to be enabled for games running at a minimum FPS of 55 for 1080p displays and 70 for 1440p or above displays. And like I told you before, yes, it's recommended to have 70. I tested on my 1440p Ultra Wide display. At 60 FPS it works perfectly fine. In some games, not all games, but it is definitely much, much smoother when you're aiming for 70 FPS base, 75. If you're hovering, let's say, 80 FPS, it actually performs pretty well. You can feel the input latency, but in terms of motion artifacts, you have almost none. It works actually pretty well with an 80 FPS uh, base. So if you want to go from 80 FPS to 160, it works pretty well, actually. AFMF adds frame generation technology to boost FPS outside of the game's engine, so to see the resulting FPS, use the AMD software performance metrics overlay. Support for third-party performance monitoring tools is not available at this moment. This means that if you are using, let's say, MS Afterburner, the frames won't be presented with it, because the frames are being injected outside of the game's engine, and MS Afterburner, at least for now, won't be able to read them. So you have to go to the performance metrics on the MD software, enable the, the FPS counting, enable, for example, the, the system latency, because it will show you the system latency increased by the frame generation, the fluid motion in this case. And I mean, you can see everything there. So you have to, if you want to, you can use the MD performance software overlay and the MS Afterburner at the same time. MS Afterburner will show you the in-game engine FPS, while the, um, the MD software will show you the overall FPS with the fluid motion. As for the fixed issues, we have only AMD Software Adrenaline Edition may fail to install on some systems. And the known issues are intermittent driver crashes have been observed when AFMF is enabled and the game's resolution is changed or task switch happens, such as all tab between different windows. Brief corruption may be observed when switching between windows with AFMF enabled on some 144Hz or greater monitors. Brief stutter may be experienced after closing the Xbox game bar. FreeSync displays may report an erratic FPS 
when AFMF is enabled. And the final known issue is some metrics such as frame time may show inconsistent results when AFMF is enabled. And of course, if you don't know, these drivers are just for the RX 7000 series. I believe so, I believe so. At least fluid motion only works so far officially with a um, with 7000 series. And remember, this is supposed to be released in the quarter one of two, 2024. So it's still a couple of months away and it will definitely get better with time. Remember, this is a preview slash beta driver. Now let's get to the chase once again and let's go to the things that I found about these drivers. Not only about fluid motion, but the things that I found that are actually pretty interesting. So the first thing that I noticed is that we actually now have a smart technologies tab that includes smart access memory, noise suppression, privacy view, one click overclocking with four CPU and GPU. And look at this now, smart access video. So they have shown smart access video as a thing to come, but they never spoke about it again in let's say like a year. Um, and yet it is now in these drivers AMD Smart Access Video. If you don't know what it is, watch this part of the presentation. And then for video creators, any video creators in the audience? Anybody create video? You're gonna love this. So we're introducing something we call Smart Access Video. Smart Access Video works with select applications when you pair the Ryzen 7000 series with the new Radeon 7000 series. And unlike other platforms that can really only make use of either your CPU or your GPU's video compression engines, Smart Access Video distributes the encoding and decoding workloads across both your Ryzen CPU and your Radeon graphics cards video compression engines, enabling faster 4K and 8K editing. And when it comes to batch transcoding, Smart Access Video reduces parallel transcoding times by nearly one third. Smart Access Video will be available across applications like OBS, Premiere Pro, FFmpeg, and more starting in December. So as you see, pretty nice thing in specific applications for people rendering videos like me. Although it is of course only for the, the Ryzen 7000 series and RX 7000 series, but it is a good start. Another exciting thing that I found about these drivers is that AMD is now delivering a thing that no one is. No one. Their recording feature now offers you the option to record at 30, 60, 90 and 120 FPS. This means that you can record your videos, your gameplays at 90 or 120 FPS, something that you couldn't do before. And from what I know, at least you can't do on the Nvidia side and you can't do on the Intel side as well. So this is a new thing for the, the AMD side. This is a new thing that will come in official drivers. And I already tested it recorded at 120 FPS and it does work at 90 and 120 FPS. Of course, you have to increase the video bitrate because you have double the FPS, double the frames to fill in of the 60 FPS that you usually have, but it works. It works and nonetheless, it feels much better if you have a high refresh rate monitor. Actually pretty cool. Also, the metrics profiles changed. We now have presets with the ability to tweak them in terms of names, colors, sizes, and more. Now you have several presets like the advanced and uh, basic and so on. And you can also change, uh, for example, like you do in, in MS Afterburner, where you change the colors uh, of the names, the colors of the GPU, for example, the name of the GPU. So you can change the groups. You can go even further and customize everything, something that you couldn't do before. So it's much more improved in terms of the performance metrics as well. Also, the graphic settings do not include the advanced options anymore. Well, they include them, but they are just not inside the advanced options anymore, they're just options. Well, you just need to go down and the advanced options are just there. You don't, you don't need to click on the advanced tab or on the advanced button in order to show them. Okay, they're just there. That's one, one of the things that changed. And of course, we have the AMD fluid motion frames that work pretty well. I actually have to say that I'm surprised because in terms of motion, if you have at least 70 FPS, it works pretty well. I didn't see any motion artifacts I didn't see any problems. It is driver based and yet it works wonderfully well. The only downside is actually the latency, the added up latency, uh, which is much better with FSR 3 frame generation. But once again, the FSR 3 frame generation does not support FreeSync and AFMF, the fluid motion frames, support. So it's a big plus. It feels much smoother with the AFMF versus the frame generation if you're not at your maximum refresh rate of the monitor. Um, it feels smooth and the only downside, once again, is the input latency that you can definitely feel. 
Even at 70 or 80 FPS, imagine that you're running for example 70 FPS. You enable the fluid motion frames and let's say you go to 140 FPS because it does double the frames. So you go to 140 FPS and you kind of feel like you're still playing at 70 FPS or maybe 80 FPS. So the input latency is not that better compared to the 70 to the 70 FPS base that you have, but it feels much smoother because you have more frames for your monitor to show. That's basically how it works. But of course, I still stand by my word. AMD Fluid Motion Frames work very well, even more since we're talking about a technical preview, basically a beta driver, and I'm sure it will improve way more than that. It will get better and better with less input latency and even better image quality, I suppose. And well, guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll just leave you with a small side-by-side -side comparison as I usually do on my driver videos. It's just for you to see the differences in between. I'll test, for example, Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, I'll try to test Jedi Survivor as well. I'll do my best to show you the best results that we can get with fluid motion frames. Once again, thank you very much and see you in the next video, guys. Cheers. Far could he have gone? Anyone home? How far could he have gone? Anyone home?